Right, arithmetic time! Today we wanna do it for a map. Can you guess which one? Uh, it's one of the alternative emotes. Can you guess which one? It starts with P! I think that's the only payload. I don't know if payload race is the only one. But yeah, it's a payload race map. You have four options, three because I already did high tower. Ba, 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 ba. Ah, did you guess Banana Bay? Because that's where we're going. So yeah, that's what we're gonna critique today. As always, some disclaimers. Uh, first, I'm not gonna dive too deep into game design. This is not that kind of uh, content, I guess. Uh, I'm just gonna dip a bit into it, uh, but I'm focusing more on the visuals and also for this critique I'm gonna be following Feldman's method, which is about four steps in order, description, then analysis, then interpretation, then judgment or evaluation, their name works. On the description I'm gonna describe what I see, on the analysis I'm gonna take a look at the elements of art and uh, for the artwork. On the interpretation, I'll be interpreting the creative vision behind the artwork. And then the base card, the payload cards, and all that good stuff. And uh, finally, on that, so just change the videos real quick. So, as I was saying, on the interpretation, I'm gonna interpret the creative vision. And on the judgment step, I'm gonna take a look at the principles of art for this artwork, compare those to the vision that I interpreted, and see how well do they fit together, because depending on that, that's what tells us if this is a successful or unsuccessful work of art, and that's the judgment call that I'm going to make in the end, the last thing on the judgment step. So, with all that said, uh, let us begin! Description, what do I see? As always, we're inside this uh, spawn room in the map. Uh, a clock, one of those end of shift paper things, trash bin, some ventilation duct, uh, notice board, what else? In this one, it has something different because if you look at the window, we are in some sort of island or something. Tropical island, maybe, from the weather, right? It's very shiny and there are a lot of those trees over there in the distance. Who knows? Calendar, the locker with uh, ammunition and medical supplies, towels, benches, and classic stuff. What else? Camera. So we have this support things here, part as part of the structure, which... Uh, I don't know exactly the name of it, but it's something slightly different from what we're used to seeing. Over here, I would guess this is some sort of storage. There are some crates that we can see uh, under this sort of shutter door thing. More lockers, there is a button on top of one, a bell siren thing. Uh, so this barrel says radioactive. <laughs> okay then, that's not dangerous at all, you know? <laughs> There's a bunch of bananas here on this tray, uh, moving tray. What else? Can I kind of make out what's down there? We have like a bunch of uh, girders, I guess, and some sort of downward path down there. More barrels. Okay, these ones are downright open. Uh, hmm. uh, I'm glad the pyro is, has their mask, so they won't be smelling this, I suppose. Not so lucky for the other marks. Over there we can see some room with a desk, some sort of computer servers, machines behind it. A door, a clock, there's a safe with some stuff, a banana, a banana peel I guess, a sack stone, and some other you know, trophies, a, some sort of workstation here. I would guess this would be, and I was thinking like the announcer and the Miss Pauline, uh, being in this room, but it doesn't make sense, right? Because the announcer is the one with all the screens. Miss Paul is doing something else usually, according to the lore, I guess. Uh, down there, is that sniper's 
trailer. Not the trailer, uh, I forget the name of this car. Anyway, yeah. What else? This pipe. There's these pipes here. And uh, anything else for me to describe on this power room? Like, uh, well, yeah, I'm not gonna describe every single thing. You know, there are bottles here, I guess. Didn't mention that before, but you know. Uh, for overall, for the most part, I think that's it. Ah, okay, this is interesting. Banana Bay export. So we have like a bunch of crates with bananas. So. Okay. Anything else for me to describe here? Uh, I don't know. I think that's it. Let's move on. Uh, so I have this two gates here, another bunch of crates of bananas. Banana Bay export. N news Banana Land Ice Cream Advertisement Quest Sporting for the Shoe. Someday I'll figure out what this thing is, but we have another one of these here. Some sort of mobile computer thing. I don't know. Uh, now I have like two gates. Okay, there's a train passing through this one. Banana Bay Export. So there are train tracks. There are train tracks here. Here you can see the beach through another angle. I can fall down here. Okay. More banana crates. The ocean is pretty vast. And here we are. In some sort of beach. There's this pillar. A tunnel here. Now oh, look at the grass and the flowers, the tropical vegetation, some coconut, coconut palm trees. Oop, the train's coming again. Can we get a good look at it? Uh, no trees passing. Okay, so it's a train, but on the bay exports with a bunch of wagons. Uh, what else? Oh, I don't want to die. Oh, yeah, okay. That's it for the train. A bunch of yellow wagons. And anything else? And here we can take a look at this rock formation. I guess we could see it before. And uh, is this? No, it's closed. No. Okay. If I go here, this is the exit of gate uh, one, I think. Yeah, so this is the exit of gate one. More banana crates. There's this thing, this is Cardinals. Is this a wooden platform with a specific name that I don't remember right now? Saw it once, forgot it. Uh, some metal plates here, giving some sort of protection on this part of the structure. I would say concealer, I'm not sure how. That it protects that much, but it definitely conceals what's behind it. Banana. Uh, what else? Uh, some ventilation fan thing. This is another exit, not one of the gates, but uh, yeah, with more banana crates and the wooden platform. Here is another angle of this island, more water. Here we have this little keys with a boat. Ropes, the, this thing, forget the name of it. You know, uh, what else? Water, we can see some clouds in the distance. It's the sky is shining bright in the, up above. What else? What else? What else? What else? And here is the payload. Uh, I'm gonna be considering the payload itself, the 3D model, as a part of the map. We had this discussion before. Uh, what else? More beautiful flowers. The rocks here are have some sort of pink color to their to them. That's interesting. Uh, what else? This one is more gray, but then we're gonna talk about colors later. We have this sort of bridge structure here, and there is the rails of the payloads. So this is a payload race. So there is gonna be two of them. Plants here are inside the tunnels, shovel crates of dynamite, gold metal dynamite. Probably used to dig up these tunnels, I would guess. Pickups also going to be considered a part of the map. Here we have this underwater part. What else to describe? Uh, let's see. Some sort of wooden walls built on that part. Now there is no bridge. Ba, 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 ba. Now we're getting to the other enemy side of the map, right? Oops, I fell down. 
and things here are basically symmetrical, repeated, just some little change, maybe this, not sure if this specific color of flower was on, present on the other side. What else? And similar stuff, although this now is the red in spawn, not the blue thing in spawn, the red in spawn. Ah, cool, we have these lights which uh, shine, I imagine when the train's about to pass. Yep. It's good to see if something changes. I would guess I can jump here, maybe. I would have to test at some point. But anyway, uh, and over here, yeah. Not sure what else I could describe. So yeah, this so one on the blue side of the map, existing fortress. So pale gray, symmetrical. There is a blue, blue side and red side. Uh, the rocks are more grey, right? And these ones are more red. We're gonna talk about that on the analysis. I'm not sure there's anything else for me to describe. More flowers. Pretty colorful map, right? The, both on the vegetation, all the... On the sand, the waters, the sky, all in very like vivid colors. Uh, let's see here. I guess in both sides of the map, the, the vista is basically the same. I think rocks in this part. Uh, as we can could expect, another boat with ropes and uh, it's not a paddle. I forget the name of this. And over here, just in case. Yeah, the vistas are basically the same. Maybe it's some details. I think not sure if this antenna thing was on the other side. But uh, again, banana boxes, boxes full of banana. So let's just go to the red thing and spawn and see if there's anything different there. Because otherwise, I think we have described it, everything in general. Uh, let's see. Okay, so mostly here the things are the same as you can expect. Oh, okay. I guess we have a coffee machine here. <laughs> Some mugs, okay. But other than that, uh, more banana exports, radioactive barrels, all of that is equal from both things. So here we have this, what, a bomb in the desk over there? I don't know. Uh, oh, down there, instead of uh, the sniper van thing, we have a bunch of banana crates and stuff, okay. On this billboard, there are things different. Spytech bankrupt, massive suitcase, nuke recall. Could sink Manco's subsidiary. Two four times. Best trailing a bust. Manco's Australian Institute, a dangerous failure. <laughs> okay. Missing, have you seen this person? <laughs> this is from the the Saxton Awards update thing where there was the filmmaker who got uh, dealt with, let's say, by Miss Polly. And now Manco Memo noticed to employees do not fit the homeless helmet wearing men living in our dumpsters. Okay. <laughs> Manco noticed to employees, it is not a secret base if you keep telling people <laughs> where it is. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess I hadn't read, it, re read these, these memo things. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna read out the Gorilla Wrestling Fridays. It's just a. Find this man. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the, the billboard is much more colorful on the red thing side. But in any, in any case. Uh, yeah. Then for this art critique, I believe the description is over. Uh, the billboard on this one is much more f similar to what you're used to seeing. So, yeah. So, that's it for the description. Let's move on to the analysis. So, for the analysis, I'm gonna be considering eight elements of art. You're gonna usually see seven, but some authors believe the seven that you usually are going to see are lines, shapes, forms, space, texture, color, and value. And some authors also add points to that, which is what I'm going to do because um, that's what makes sense to me personally. I don't know how I would exclude, ignore points, for example, on a postmodernist point list art, you know. <laughs> Uh, Opus, what was it, 247, for example? I don't know, yeah, anyway. 
so that's what, what I'm doing and for this analysis let's begin with points why not as I usually do uh, so the only thing with points and perhaps that's why you usually don't see it is that often they are it's either hard to make out a point, or it's easier to describe them as other elements of art. For example, this stuff over here, maybe we could count them points, but uh, I think it's easier to just describe them as the texture, some sort of slightly damaged or irregular texture on the wall. Texture basically refers to the appearance of surfaces of things in a work of art. So, yeah. But still, I, I still like to leave dots in because I still believe it can be used. But in this case, I would I will go with that route of just describing this more on the texture side. Let's see if there would be something that I wouldn't uh, consider a good idea to do, to do that. More of these textures in here. I think there's not much else to see. Uh, Four points. Ah, this. This black bar in the middle <laughs> naturally is more of a bound rather than a point. In case you thought something like that. Um, over here again, we could kind of make out some point, but I think it's make more sense to look at them as textures. Like because they are not isolated, right? The the texture, right? There is a whole texture around them, so I don't know. Uh, what else? Over here, <laughs> radioactive viral stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Let's look on other parts. Don't think I see anything that I would uh, describe as a point here. Unlike for, <laughs> again, in a point list work of art, for example. Here again, textures. This one is kind of a scraped off texture to me. What else? The, oh, maybe this? Let's see. So we have this things here. I wouldn't call these as textures. Uh, I'm just... Mm. Uh, man, yeah, sure, let's call these points. I was thinking, should I call this maybe... A, it's, I don't wouldn't call this a texture, but is it maybe some refers more better to the forms of it? Or shapes? Or whatever. Let's call these points. So, in this case it's used to represent some nails right on the boxes. Uh, and if we're gonna make an analysis of them, they are black and place the you know in this sort of pattern on the on the boxes. Uh, and that's mostly it for the analysis. That seems to be the case for many, although not not all of the boxes. No, maybe all of the boxes, in, at least in some angle. Okay, um, let's see if we can find any other points. Texture stuff. Here we see some. Okay, so these nails would be way definitely like better described as for by their forms, <laughs> even shapes. So this is the counterexample of this idea that I'm describing. But anyway, um, our texture, what texture points? Let's say uh, there's. Uh, the vegetation stuff, there is the payload rails again. Again, maybe if you can make out some points, I would think it makes more sense to call them as textures. Uh, what else? We have the whole vista, the waters, the trees. Not easy to make out points in general for these. And if there are, I guess it Maybe there's some like depth far distance in the silhouette of some sort of another island or stuff. Uh, like, like I see one and one part of it like over here. Mm, uh, do I see any others? I don't know. Even this one that I'm seeing looks a bit pushing it. <laughs> but whatever. Let's just say it's yeah. Okay, so there's like one maybe more points alongside the shapes of the silhouette of the island in the distance again uh, this one not sure if it's not black necessarily i think maybe it's a dark blue and 
they are kind of isolated, so that's my analysis on that. Let's see if we can find any other points. I'm already surprised that I have found two. <laughs> Usually when I am hunting for Trezards, when I do find a point, it's like one. So it's, um, just one kind of point. Very good to see two. There's a lantern. I haven't described this part, but I guess there's there's like this lantern here and the underside of the this viaduct thing. Bridge. More for, I think it's a viaduct when it doesn't go over water, right? So yeah. Uh, viaduct thing. What else for points? I guess I could look at the pickup since I'm considering it a past part of the map. But I don't think I can see anything. Again, details in scraped off paint texture, let's say. Uh, I'm not sure we're gonna find any other points. After that whole description, I don't think I remember anything that was not so for points in the first place. And again, off towns in Fortress when there are points. Ah, okay, maybe this? Mm, I, differently than the banana boxes, this is less of a point and more of a cigarette. Maybe this could be described as a texture, some sort of slightly concave texture. Some, con some sort of small concavity. Uh, can we find a point looking at it through different angles? No, it's mostly textures here. Oops. Yeah, okay. Uh, we tried, <laughs> let's say. Uh, what else? Not sure, not sure, not sure. I'm just giving a quick glimpse again to see if I mix any missed anything. But yeah. The only. Ah, no trespassing sign again. Scrape it off paint texture, I would say. I would for this case. Let me see. Um, hmm. Yeah, kind of, because they are like close to some shapes. So I think it's easier to describe it in that way. Um, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Yeah, so the only thing that I think that I think would be missing is to look at the train itself, see if we could find some points in it, but that's gonna be very hard because the train moves fast and stuff like that. We have to take screenshots maybe, I don't know. Uh, right here I don't think I see points. I don't know, so yeah, I guess that's uh, that's it for points. So, ah, what about here? I just noticed there are some details on the tracks maybe. No, they're more like the element of space, I would say. It's, yeah, I think it's more of the element of space. It's kind of a small circle of uh, the part that's not um, made, out, made out of metal. Even the... Oh, no. Oh, 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 okay. I guess we're gonna have at least one chance to see if there's any noticeable point. Yeah, hard, hard. If I see some, they're mostly like helping with the textures, as I see it briefly here. Again, yeah, so, okay. So let's leave the analysis on points for the two things that I said before. So we have like, uh, also here, not sure if there is any. So one of the vistas we have like uh, some dark blue one, isolated ones. And we have some red, ah, I guess there is also the payload, but I don't think there is much here. I have this stuff, but they are, this one is like considering their gradient, they look like some like some sort of concave textures to me, much like for the wooden, wooden keys thing. Uh, so, yeah, to me it's more like a hole, especially because I can see some sort of gradient, color gradient from them. Uh, yeah, anyway, at least that's what I'm going for here. So, okay, so just to recap, uh, one dark blue or more on the on one of the vistas kind of isolated and on the banana boxes we see points black in pattern and uh, yeah, you know, and that's it I guess. So let's move on to another element of art, let's talk about lines. So for lines, for Fortress 2, there is usually a, this kind of uh, 
texture texture conundrum often. For example, here you are there like some lines here on this part of the wood. You could maybe say that, but at the same time, it's also easy to just describe this as a woody texture. You know, a texture that showcases represents well the appearance of wood. In this case, I'm gonna prefer to describe this as a woody texture. And so, what else? Here for for this line, for example, I think it would make more sense to describe this as the element of space. So there's instead of saying there is a line here. I would say there is a very thin gap. That's how I look at things here. And so yeah, for examples of where we, there could be lines, but on T Fortress 2 is kind of rare or usually not there. Is from the borders of object and stuff. For example, here, here is this a good example? Let's see. Uh, yeah, sure. I guess it's good enough. So, some three, some 3D art do it like this. From this kind of situation where we have like two sides, they would place a line in the middle of it to differentiate. Examples include uh, the aesthetics from the Borderlands game series, Borderlands game series, games from the Telltale Company, Ultimate Spider-Man from the PlayStation, PlayStation 2. All three of the games that have some lines to them. But here on Team Fortress 2, like, uh, they chose, as I said, they chose to use no, no lines whatsoever. If there is a line here, how thick it is, I always use that question to help out to determine these things. To me, there is no <laughs> lines, the thickness would be zero, basically. So, yeah. So let's see, with that said, so let's see if we can find some lines that I wouldn't consider then that I wouldn't uh, see as texture or space or etc etc let's see here underneath uh, not much to, I was I didn't look at this part before but there's not much to talk about here there's uh, lines 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 here I would call this again some sort of texture maybe a pattern texture the way it is or a um, yeah, pattern texture is probably the best way to describe this. I would say the way it is on the on the walls. Let's see. Oh, uh, on the train maybe there are some lines. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Now again, following that in Fortress sure static. Another example here. Like there could be a, a line in the middle of it, you know, but I don't see any. So let's see if we can find some lines somewhere here. Again, some sort of texture for the for the palm tree, the bark of the palm tree, I guess. Uh, here again, some leafy textures. It's usually usually easier to see lines on to the art, for example. Even though even that's not necessarily uh, gonna be there. You can think, I don't know, Samurai Jack, uh, Foster Mansion for Imaginary Friends. Both of those cartoons had no lines in their aesthetics. Maybe Foster Mansion had on some characters, but on the those were like exceptions to the rule. Uh, on the rails, again, it's gonna be either mostly lines or shape. Ah, oops, the train is coming, right? Yeah, the train is coming. through this angle, yeah, much of more of the same. I also think sometimes you it's easier to describe uh, some stuff uh, for the element of value. For example, here on the outline of some of these wooden parts, I believe there's some sort of gradient that makes me believe they are easier to describe as value, some sh small shadows basically. So yeah, uh, with all that said, I don't think I have found lines here. Uh, again, very comforting for the shoot, but it's always your job to, it's my job to look for the exceptions, and sometimes they do show up. So I think I'm going to say that uh, there are no lines here, and a bunch of stuff that I'm going to be describing either in 
value, space, or texture, maybe farms even, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so let's move on then. Now that said, let's talk about the element of shapes. Uh, if, in case you're wondering, shapes and farms, kind of, people use it interchangeab inter interchangeably <laughs> in day-to-day -day life, right? But for this art critique and for the elements of art, uh, shapes are basically two-dimensional always and forms are three-dimensional always, you know, that's the, the idea. So for shapes, uh, for example, what's the shape of this barrel? It's kinda of a rectangle, not a perfect one, let's see, let's see. because uh, that, that, uh, you know, 2D. 3D naturally is like a cylinder, but the shapes 2D is a rectangle. And naturally, since this is a 3D art, different angles give different shapes, so... For example, here, through this specific angle, the shape of a barrel then becomes a circle, you know. But let's look at the most common ones, the most uh, easy to see, considering the author's presentation. So, first things first, as I mentioned, there's like rectangles here, these lockers... Uh, through some angles rectangle, rectangular shapes, but also hexagonal, like this, because you have the, the, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, so it's a he hexagon, not a regular hexagon, but still. Um, so hexagons, shapes, hexagons, rectangles, for the barrels, depending on the angle, you're gonna see oblong shapes, which is basically, imagine a rectangle with smoothed out edges, so oblong shapes here. Uh, what else? More rectangles for the, and hexagons for the crates. We have a bunch of unique shapes for the many detailed things, for example, in those rooms. And... Uh, for like the desk and the many details and stuff. Have the pipes with their very thin and long shapes. And again, like hard to describe it as something geometrical. Again, the tray with many details. Let's move on to see the rest of the map. More rectangles and hexagons for the boxes and rectangles and oblongs for the cylinders. Uh, over, if you look at the vista, we're gonna see unique shapes for the silhouette of the island. A bunch of granulated, I would say, uh, minute, with many minute details, shapes for the trees on the islands. I fell down. The palm trees have their unique shapes of some of a very long and thin base, and then a sprawled out uh, shape on the top part of it. So that kind of stays the same. I don't know if. No matter the angle you look at the palm tree, at least through most angles. What else? Pa, 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 pa. The bridge here, rectangle easily in shapes. Have stuff like this with a bunch of, you, you know, kind of a bunch of rectangles. There are many shapes and angles. So rectangles, maybe squares and hexagons for the small ammo pack. And, uh, not much to come up with, kind of a bottle shaped <laughs> bottle shape for the small health pack. For the vegetation, we have a lot of these thin shapes for the leaves, and a number of the and for the plant for the flowers, we have the this kind of flower shape, you know, with the petals and stuff. Uh, what else? We have the paddles, I don't know if that's the name. It's their long shape with the more fatter one at the, at the end of it. Uh, some blobby shapes, let's say for the ropes, kind of circular. I would say blobby. Uh, the boat has like... It's a unique shape, no? pointier end and rounder sides and a, f a straight uh, back of it. So much of a... The pillow has very unique shapes on its own. Or else the rocks, the rocks are, which are very present in a lot of parts of the map. We have bigger rocks like this one, which makes some sort of... Uh, a lot of walls. 
They have pretty unique shapes to them. There is a lot of curvature. There is a lot of a certain degree of smoothness there. Not perfectly smooth, but uh, there is a bit of it. Certainly not straight, I would say, and very few edges. And not, not sharp edges. What else? So that's it for the bigger rocks. And for the smaller ones, like this, for example. Uh, what else? We have... Uh, it would be... How to describe their shapes? Uh, again, like, they're, they have shapes of their own. Uh, yeah, they have, like, shapes of their own. I don't think it's easy to describe these as something just geogra geometrical. And uh, more... mostly... Yeah, I don't know. They're not that tall, they're not that thick. They are, they are kind of whatever, I would say. No, not many noticeable features or dimensions, I, that's what I would say. For the rails, there are like very elongated shapes for the metal part and then the, a bunch of rectangles for the, uh, you know, planks that made up those things. What else? For the bridge, we have some more interesting shapes here. We have this arc, and uh, sorry, the viaduct, I guess. We have this arc, with, it's uh, one of the few things with some noticeable curvature here on the map. Uh, up, um, over it, there's the straight part, and there's the many, 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 many like thin rectangles for the whole structure of the viaduct. Something similar down here, kind of a bit on this, these parts near the wall. What else? Again, a bunch of rectangles, maybe some hexagons depending on the angle, not sure, for this little staircase. Any other notable shape? Uh, let's see. The yellow box have like easily the, <laughs> have some rectangular hexagonal ish shapes. The health pack, uh, square ish shapes. Dependence on the angle or hexagonal again. But I'm kind of repeating myself now, right? I'm not sure if there's anything else to describe, to analyze for the shapes. Uh, I guess I didn't mention the lights, but just circular shapes there. As they light up, either circular or oval, depending on the angle. Yeah, depending on the angle, oval. Uh, for 3D art, you often like you're gonna have more than one shape for each object, you know, because of the different angles. So that's why it was like circular and oval. For the barrel, it's rectangular and oblong. For the. There could be also circular, but I'm omitting that because of the author's presentation. It's easier to just see the rectangular and oblong shapes for the barrels. For the crates, it's either rectangular, square, or hexagonal, and stuff like that. I'm not sure if there's anything else for me to analyze in the shapes. I mentioned a lot of shapes with the unique properties, like the vistas, the minute detailed shapes of the forests of the islands, the rocks with their... <laughs> this, one, this is where I had the most trouble analyzing, but yeah, the rocks without any no, very, very noticeable traits. The long thin shapes with the sprawling ends for the coconut trees. Uh, I think that's it, right? Also, there's the bigger rocks. I mentioned the rails. Let's move on to the elements, uh, the element of forms. So forms, it's more about three dimensionality. So, for example. The locker, the lockers have a blocky form. I was referring to them as rectangular or hexagonal shapes, but for their forms, they are like blocky. You have cylinder, cylindrical shapes for the barrels, blocky for the crates again. What else? The bananas are bananas, I guess. <laughs> the, okay, sure. Let, just just for for the sake of it, let's let's describe the shapes and forms of the banana. 
Real quick, for shapes the bananas would be a you know very curvy shape, and for farms, um, similarly banana farm ba banana farms hard. I think it's the best way to describe it. Uh, to analyze it, what else? Tubular farms for the you know the tubes here. <laughs> what else? Again, if the many details and intric intricacies. Some uh, there's a number of unique farms there on the room, especially like the desk, the workstations, the chair. What else? The TV is somewhat blocky, but it also has a number of details. So on so forth. The sex is very unique. You know, it's the form of it's a humanoid form of Saxton Hill, basically. What else? What else? Yeah, yeah stuff like that. Again, I'm not gonna analyze everything. It's, just like, let's look at the broader stuff, you know, the more important ones. Block, farm sort this thing also, by the way. Um, so the, uh, the train has a bunch of blocks for their wagon, block-like farms for their wagons. And the head of it is pretty unique, it's like, uh, has the lights, has the, the hood. Many parts of a car, you know, of a vehicle. So that's, I think, roughly the best I can say for farms, instead of just saying the train, the train head farm or something. For the vegetation, the farms of it are a lot of thin and flat farms here. Flat especially for these leaves, right? Uh, which has also some... I didn't mention the shapes of it, but anyway, it would be somewhat of a kind of a leaf, sh leaf shape but with some uh, indentations, but anyway, back to farms, that's where we're, we're at. So yeah, sh very, a lot of thin and flat farms, and um, mostly it, honestly. The flowers are very, f in general, flat, you know, as you would expect somewhat. The, okay, not all flowers, you would expect more curvature, but these ones are somewhat flat. Uh, anyway, the distance, there's not much to see in terms of farm there. For the trees and the little farms in the island, I think we c I can make out there is this whole set of, you know, cones for the barks and the... Of, not the bark, sorry, the... You know, the middle part of the tree, of, of the wood. The, the trunk, the trunk. So there's a bunch of cylindrical farms for the trunks. And this, then this bushy-like farms for the, the leaves. What else? Uh, for the palm trees, some very thin tube-like farms. Farm for the trunk of it, and then they... Again, you could describe this as sprawl-like, much like we did for shapes. But I would say it kind of has a lot of flat, you know, flat uh, surfaces here of the leaves, so I would add that since, uh, to the idea of something sprawled, a bunch of flat farms sprawled out, and also I guess there is also some uh, sphere-like farms for the coconuts. What else? Uh, blah, 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 blah. For the rails, we have, ah, can we, look, we have a better look at the train? Yeah, so for the farms, I think the only thing I would say for the train head is the there is like a blocky f blockier farm behind, and then in front of it a more uh, another a, a block again, but with different dimensions. Block like, you know, it's not they are not perfect perfect blocks, but in any case, if we're going to try to simplify it, uh, what else? I, oh yeah, I was talking about the rails. So very like slightly elevated farms specifically has some very like a thin long blocky farm thing for the metal part not sure if there's a better way to describe it well anyway it's a pretty long small and thin farm here uh, what else we have this thin blocky farms for the wood. I'm saying blocking a lot, am I not? <laughs> and here's something a bit different, some cylindrical farms for the support beams. And again, some like, 
flat ones for the planks. And I would say, I was going to say blocky, but I guess you could say flat. I think it describes it a little bit better. Much like we have all the, a lot of flat, we have like this flat flatness on the top of it because of the planks. Again, we have support beams. The boat has unique farms of its own. It's like a, the boat farm with the has the concave part and you know the curvature and all that pretty unique. Perhaps I could just say it the farms of a boat. I don't know. The rope here has some sort of coiled like snake like farms, I guess. Those are like two two beams or something, it's just chilling and baking the sun. I don't know. <laughs> just realized that cool. What else? The payload has this like the top part of it, the bomb, has this rounder, uh, it's very a farm with a lot of curvature and then on the on the cart itself there is a lot of flatness and stuff. I have already did an art critique on the payload itself, I'm not gonna describe it too much, also because it's just one small one part of the map. Smaller one I would say even. What else? For the rocks. For the farms of the rocks, again, they have, they're pretty unique, I would say. There are somewhat, there's some degree of flatness, but not too much. And uh, that's mostly it for the smaller ones. For the bigger ones, then stuff changes. Then they have a lot of curvature, much like for, as I said, for shapes, for the farms. Also, there is a noticeable degree of curvature and lack, lack of sharp pointy turns and mostly that's very very hard to see flatness in the bigger rocks way easier on the smaller ones on the bigger rocks there's just so much curvature and is there anything else worth mentioning for this analysis on the farms i already mentioned the palm trees the payload and stuff well, I guess there is like the whole geometry, geography, uh, I don't know, geometry or geography of the map itself. That's also, so like, has a lot of twists and turns, a lot of curvature, especially like on the ground, for example. So there's a lot of slopes, a lot of, what else? I read the, it's that uh, part of it I already mentioned for the rocks, but anyway. Uh, A lot of slopes and elevations and some parts a bit flatter like this here is some, somewhat flatter but even then it's a little bit tilted right and yeah there's just a lot of variance in the angles of things for the forms of the map in general pretty interesting ah, and also the bridge let's talk about the bridge is there a banana peel in here okay and the bridge for the farms Pretty unique farms here also, it has this sort of cage-like structure, right? With the many bar things, the girders, the support parts. And other than that, uh, and if you look at this as a whole, it has this arc, you know, arc-like farms. And uh, yeah, not sure there's anything else for me to analyze here. I think we have covered most of the things here. So I guess let's move on to the next element of art here uh, that I usually do. You, you don't need to, it, I, we don't need to follow an order, but it helps me <laughs> to remember those. So space, the element of space. Uh, let's wait the train to go away. First things first. Uh, there is like this whole vast area for the vista, right? On both sides of the map. There's this whole expansive vista, there's the ocean, there is the sky. So that's a very noticeable use of space. There is like, it's symmetrical, there's one on the, the left and one of the right on both sides of the map. So that's, that. Uh, let's get that out of, that out of the way. After that, we have uh, somewhat of a well, labyrinthine, let's say, use of space. A lot of like tunnels and routes that take you one place to another, and they all kind of 
connect in very hard to grasp ways, let's say. Uh, what else? Labyrinth time, there's the vastness one. Other than that, there is some, and for many details, there is a very tight use of space, for example, here. Between every single one of the beings, the, the support beings, the wood, there's tight, very tight space in between all of them. Visually, it matters to us. For gameplay, it doesn't, but for us, critiquing as art, it does. What else? Mm, that's like mostly it. Some parts of the whole labyrinthine map have like stuff like this, which is a little bit more open and less labyrinthine, you know. But those are like pinpoint spots. Uh, what else? Ah, and there, as I mentioned before, we have details like uh, hey, we meet in between between gaps of the wood, for example. I think that. It's like the woods, not, the woods not perfectly match with each other, so that's, as I see it, that's what's giving this visual effect here. It's basically the element of space, as I said before, so there's a minute gap in between the woods, number of those. And uh, anything else for space? There is like technically some tight use in this sprawling thing near the center of it, it also right for the palm trees um, pattern let's say use of space I'm not sure if I should say that <laughs> I would say pattern use of space for the rails but let's just say that there is also some tight use of space there in between the pattern patterns of of the wood not patterns of space patterns of wood I think it's better better way to think about it but yeah so not tight space enough those and there is other use of space that's worth mentioning let's see labyrinthine and all that stuff i hear another example of a more open part of it no it's, it's still like it's not that uh, not that uh, not that open you know we still have many walls around it somewhat but it's a little bit better than before let's say it's less like a tunnel this part here and i think if we climb here to where the train goes and likewise here we have this is uh, again more of an open part and this here is probably one of the mo openest parts parts of the map let's say <laughs> the parts of the map where it's most open uh, in any case, not counting obviously the vast expansive vistas on both sides. So I think that's it as for the element of for the yeah for the element of space. Uh, I mean, for for example, the banana box is another case of a very tight use of space for details because if, if between each banana there is some space, but it's all like very tight. So yeah, even between like these rails, there's some somewhat tight use the space there so yeah that's my analysis on, on it let's talk now about the element of texture as i said before it refers to the appearances of surfaces of things and objects in the artwork so for example here we have this like rough texture let's say a bit of a damaged one in some parts as i mentioned before for these parts that you can see as points so somewhat of a rough texture i would say like uh, rock-like even, rock-like texture. For for these wooden crates, I don't see that much of a woody texture. There is a little bit of one texture here, I guess. So maybe, maybe. For the bananas, uh, not much texture at all there. There's color, don't get me wrong, but color is another element of art. Also light and darkness value and stuff. But I don't think I see much texture to the bananas. Maybe a pseudo line there or something. As I said before, there is like um, the texture of paint that's being scraped off on numbers on a number of parts of this wall and some other signs. Sorry, of the sign and some other ones. On the ground, we see this like a 
Not sure it would call brittle texture of the main. Maybe brittle is not the best way to describe it. But uh, maybe coarse texture of all this vegetation on the ground, you see. Uh, what else? On the fl on the flowers, on the petals, we kind of actually see some texture. We see some sort of a very like soft texture, perhaps would say. Either yeah, soft texture is perhaps the best. Perhaps the best way to describe it. I was going to say pattern, but maybe it's not that much of a pattern for the textures. You know, look at it. So anyway, uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? For this leaf, um, there is not much texture. I think <laughs> more color. For the bark of the palm, the palm tree, we have these like pattern textures of the palm tree bark and stuff. For the rocks, we have this like uh, layer texture that mimics sedimentary rocks because that's how it gets like that. It's layers of sediments over the years, centuries. I don't know. Uh, what else? For this rock, we have more of a, a different texture. It's kind of a, a, I mean a rough, a rough texture. Um, yeah, rough, maybe, uh, ah, there's a word that I know in Portuguese, it would be áspero. Basically, it harms your hands a bit if you pass it there. Can I google it real quick just to see if I can find it? Da -da 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 -da. Let's translate, and my Brazilian is showing, I guess. Real big, come on, go. So, it will be something. Ah, rough, okay. <laughs> okay, whatever. It's, it's, yeah, I was already saying it, a rough texture. Okay. But, <laughs> translation moment. Anyway, uh, here, here I think I would say some planks have a woody texture to them, like this one we can kind of see the patterns of how the wood works. For the rope, somewhat of a pattern texture, but also a, what, threaded texture perhaps? You know, of the, the way the threads make out the, ro the rope? Maybe, how would you describe it? For the boat, again, a lot of woody textures, and uh, we have some like uh, degraded textures a bit, right? A bit of paint or damaged material texture, texture of uh, stuff like that. What else? There's the payload, again, woody texture on the <laughs> woody parts this time. For the train that goes, uh, we have somewhat of, uh, I don't know if, not rusty, just again degraded texture for the for the train carts, I guess, for the wagons, or of paint that was degraded over time. What else? Uh, for this part here, for these rails, I would say I have some sort of dirty texture. Um, both the pebbles and the wooden part. Less of a woody one more, like things are dirty to me it seems. Yeah. Uh, here on this graveled part, this would refer more to shapes and forms. This grave, but uh, for, there's a little bit of a what degraded texture again, I guess. Uh, the train again. Hello. I already mentioned the layered sedimentary rock texture thing. Uh, on the uh, on this arc, on this viaduct part here, it's mostly. Let's see. There is not sure. There is some sort of a rusty texture on some parts of it. Either rusty or degraded. It's others here. I guess that's my analysis on it. Again, degraded on the rock, on the rock here, a bit damaged. Uh, there was one part that I want to see again. Woody texture. There was one part. I think over here. Yeah, 
Okay, yeah, so this one is, I think, very easily a rusty kind of texture or stuff like that. I was going to say oxidated, but I think that those are the same thing. Uh, what else? I mentioned before, but these like lines on the wall, I think it makes more sense to call them a... What do I call this? A pattern texture, actually? Uh, it's like... I, mean, that, I guess that's one way you could describe it, but perhaps it would be better just to say some sort of concave-like, slightly concave-like texture, maybe. It's like there's some very slight indentation in the form of a line, you know. There ought to be a perfect name for this, but whatever, I guess I gave a, the general idea of what I'm talking about. For the leaves of the palm tree, Easily, this is a more better example of a pattern texture because it's like this a bunch of lines, you know, following the extent of the palm tree. So there we see this this pattern-like texture or this fiber-like texture. Maybe we could also use to describe it. I think. And, oh wow, this there's the sand, which has again some sort of rough texture, you know, um, sandy-like. As you should expect, perhaps. And I think that's it. I didn't mention the nails when I was talking about farms, but yeah, this, this would be some very small uh, thing and then flat farms, I guess. Anyway, uh, we are talking about textures. I think I have talked about textures in general. Again, here is some sort of pattern like texture, I think. Oh no, it's more about colors, I guess. There's some um, lines. Maybe we, call, we could call the lines here, the lines, these things, a, uh, yeah, I think we should consider them some sort of texture. I just, not, I just don't think I would call this one pattern, a pattern texture, it would be... I don't know, maybe a fiber-like texture, but I think there is, some, there is a better way to describe it, to analyze it, I don't know. Here we have this like uh, irregular textures, let's say. It, the color keeps changing. And a bit degraded, I guess. With a bit degraded texture. What else? I think that's it, right? We, just, we analyzed a lot of parts of the map. Talked, uh, described a lot of stuff, said a lot of stuff. So let's move on to the element of color. Yeah, it's in Fortress 2, red and blue, but there is more colors than red and blue in that Team Fortress 2 game. So, I mentioned before stuff like uh, grey for the rocks and pink for these rocks and pink for those ones. So, many different shades of grey for those. There's also like shades of white for this whole structure. I think the same kind of choice and color for both teams. There's the train coming. Uh, yeah, here is also like different shades of white, shades of grey also for this platform thing in the start case. Shades of uh, red dimension, shades of pink for the wall, uh, for the rocks. Ah, also the sky is blue, <laughs> and so is the ocean. <laughs> Very easy. Uh, the rocks, if all the, sm the smaller rocks also follow the color of the bigger ones, shades of pink. The sand it has a very light yellow to it, I, that's how I would analyze it. The palm trees, shades of brown for the trunk and then shades of green for the leaves, you know, uh, easy stuff. Vegetation, a lot of shades, different shades of, slightly different shades of green for the many parts of the vegetation. There is a lot of grass in this map, many parts of it. Although on some plants we see difference, like shades of blue for this one, there was white, yeah, this one is in white, what else, or here, we have shades of some either red or pink or maybe brown for this one, and here shades of orange and yellow, right, what else, it's kind of a gradient, look here, so yeah, a lot of variety in the colors of flowers especially, blue, pink, some purple, I would say, uh, what else, Ah, green also on the forests of the isles, islands and stuff. Uh, I mentioned that the water is blue. Uh, 
Push and the ah uh, the this viaduct here. Mostly I think shades of grey. Yeah. Mostly shades of grey with the as I said the rusty like rusty textures. Shades of brown for the wood, oh, a number of parts. Grey for the gravel, you know, stuff that nothing too surprising I guess. Ah, for the bananas, and yeah, of course they are yellow, and there's also some slight use of green, so they're not ripe yet, perfectly ripe, let's say. <laughs> some orange for the tails here on the gates, and inside the base, finally there is a certain degree of blue on this like the tail, kind of the tail on the wall, and and a different shade on the underneath part of it. Uh, what else? A lot of different colors for many different details here, but we have, for example, our gray for the shutters, the lockers, the tray, and uh, this part here of some sort of platform, I think, that we're standing on. A lot of different things and many different colors for the stuff on the room, I won't bother too much about that, I guess. Shades of white for the pipes. Yellow and blue for the barrels and some radioactive shades of green, let's say, some very bright green for the stuff in the, inside the barrels. What else? Uh, bananas are still yellow, there's this yellow cable thing, I guess. Uh, so, so yeah, let's not, again, let's not describe every single thing. So, I guess, the, I guess I've already mentioned shades of brown for wood, but this one has, is, I would just add that it's a lighter shade of brown, as I see it. Um, blue here, there's the advertisement. Uh, what else? I did I go for the boat. So this wood is in shades of white, I would say. Some sort of beige for the ropes, for the rope coil there, and uh, the boat itself. Is it pink? Oh, it's like red underneath, and the other part is again shades of brown, I would say. Let's look at the boat on the other side. I wonder if it, the underneath, the underside of it is blue. Mm. So, ah, uh, no, really? Also in shades of red? Okay, what a disappointment. That's okay. It would be like a red boat for blue and blue, blue, red boat for red and blue boat for blue. Okay. So any other color that I missed somewhere here? This flower has some teal, my favorite color, uh, shades of teal to it. Cool. Uh, red dimension outer blue. I think that's mostly it. Again, I'm not gonna not go over every single small thing, but I think we covered the most important ones. Just to recap for the, the rock has in shade is in half of them are in shades of white, the other half is shades of grey. And the smaller rocks follow that pattern. So now let's talk about the element of uh, value, the last one that I need to talk about. So value is about as I said already, light and darkness, shadiness and brightness. So we see because of the whole the way the map's laid about with this bunch of tunnels and stuff, there's a lot, a lot of shadows, for example here, you can make out there is one here. But at the same time we are in broad daylight, so there's also a lot of illuminated parts, like this beach here. And so that's I guess my first part of this analysis, there is a lot of both lights, a lot of both of shadier parts and brighter parts. Uh, I guess what I'm seeing is what I usually see for Team Fortress 2, and I'm gonna say it again. Uh, the shadows are very mild. You can, you can, we can make, we are in a shadier part, but we can easily make out details of the textures of the vegetation or the wood here, even though we are in the dark, supposedly, you know. Under a shade, I guess. So, very mild ones. It's not, nothing pitch black, could be, but it's not. Uh, by that token, is there anything with very intense brightness? This here is relatively bright, but I want to see something shining, something shining very strongly. See if I can find anything like that. 
something like you know when sun ref is reflected from snow stuff like that's very strong light reflection uh, I don't know if we're gonna find anything like that But at best we have like the the, lamp, the lamps themselves when they look directly at the lamps that's where we see intense brightness because you know? there's their source of light well another but other than that yeah ah, also i guess they didn't mention this but the way the ocean keeps moving we could describe this as a wavy texture i guess i don't know but anyway let's just let's talk about value uh ah, speaking of that i mentioned before how some some uh, parts of the map, like for example, the train is not coming. Here. Like, uh, was it? Or what part of, of it was it? I think. Yeah, okay, here. So this kind of wooden plank, I think I see some sort of gradient around it. So which I think, oops, right there. Which I think. Uh, it's better, better described as a shadow rather than a, li a line there. Don't think there's a line as I said before. They see it, but so, but it's a very minute shadow, right? It's basically just there for the tail. Let's, I believe. Um, with that said, I'm not sure if there's anything else for me to talk about in terms of value. Don't think I have found any part of it where the shadows are stronger let's say they're still they're all in general mild i guess i guess we have like these lanterns with uh, again source of the lantern itself it's a source of intense brightness and uh, okay i guess we could say that the light here is a little bit different than the light from the outside the light from the fire the this the light from the lantern is a bit uh, more orange, perhaps. Let's say. I guess I'm going to just say that for this analysis. And uh, but yeah, still mild shadows. But the but outside of like the directly the source of light, like the lamp, I still don't. The the bright parts are also like moderate or I don't know, nothing too intense. This one is kind of, but I still not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, it's just bright, but it's not uh, flashing. Flashing, perhaps flashing. Okay, it's bright, but uh, parts with even brighter intensities. Something flashy has to be only on the lamps, the lanterns, stuff like that. So I guess I'm. I guess that's it for the element of value. Really, not sure there's anything else for me to talk about. Ah, there's one thing. <laughs> just remember that I often say for the two maps that uh, it seems like there's some care for, for realism as you can see the shape, the shadow has somewhat the shape of the, the bridge <laughs> so and likewise here we see this shadow somewhat showcasing the shape of this arc over, over it so there's some care for realism uh, in the shapes of the shadows uh, but that's it so now, guys, we can move on. Let's go for the interpretation. So, let's interpret the creative vision here behind this map. First things first, the usual. Uh, I'm going to say what you might already be thinking on, but that this map was designed as a payload race map for Team Fortress 2. Uh, let's get out of that out of the way because as always I don't know if any history of this map has been designed for another game or stuff like that another game mode so I will add this to the creative vision that this was supposed to be a payload race map for Team Fortress 2 what else so now I also have stuff like Banana Bay <laughs> the name of it and all the bananas as I described there's the presence of bananas, there is the, the boxes, right, of bananas with banana bay export, stuff like that, name of the map. As I mentioned, the sand, oops, the, the wagons here are yellow also, and the sand I mentioned as a very bright yellow. 
So I will say that a part of the creative vision was the idea of bananas and or yellow, you know, because bananas are yellow, something like that. Bananas and or yellow was supposed to be an identifiable part of the map. Uh, especially, let's call it bananas, right? Because just yellow, I think it's not enough to cut it. Uh, we could say that the color. Well, we're gonna get that, to that later on the judgment. But yeah, uh, the, I'm going to say that the idea of the name and all that stuff was supposed to, remember, to be iconic. It's part of the creative vision. What else? Also, it's not just ban it's not a banana mountain. <laughs> it's not a banana tunnel. It's a banana bay. So, and considering again the, what we talked about before, the the vast ocean, the palm trees, the tropical island, the sun shining, uh, that makes me think that was an important idea for the map was the notion of you know a tropical island, that kind of biome. Uh, which falls in line well with bananas because I do believe they are tropical fruits. But I'm going to leave those two ideas in separate, both the idea of bananas and the idea of a, some tropical island stuff, you know? Because it could be, for example, a factory of bananas, I don't know. And uh, that's a different thing than a beach, than a bay. So yeah. Uh, so for now we have Payload Race Map Port F2, bananas, uh, a tropical island. What else? Uh, there is also the fact that we have like the train and the fact that this is a payload race map. Which is interesting. Although there are a number of maps on Team Fortress with trains and stuff. But uh, would I add, consider that part of the creative vision also? I'm not sure. Uh, how do I interpret this? like this thinking on stuff like from the description analysis like the deus of space or everything so labyrinthine and uh, the way the the tracks the payload ra rails go about this map it's which is pretty like confusing i would say uh, and also stuff like, I don't know, maybe the variety of plants and stuff makes me think an important part for the creative vision of this map and also the, the presence of the train makes me think that uh, the idea of, I'm not sure if confusion or... No, I don't think confusion, but uh, maybe chaos, let's say. Not in a negative connotation, but more like something chaotic and fun let's say chaotic and fun i interpret that uh, part of the creative vision was this method to really try to be chaotic and f chaotically fun let's say chaotically fun because i don't know uh, so because there is all there's a bunch of variety there is a bunch of as i said intertwining paths and it's all la very labyrinthine compare that to for example high tower which is like uh, the payloads intersect, the tracks intersect, and then they just go their way, in separate, right? And then they never see each other again. On this map it's like, there is so much, uh, you know, there's so much stuff going on, and too much variety can make some
Perhaps I could talk about the... No, I was thinking the rocks and stuff, but I think they are already kind of accounted for with this idea of a lot of, 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 lot of labyrinthine stuff, uh, something that you don't... And why is that? And that kind of ties to the chaotic fun, because if you don't know where you're going, if you are in some labyrinthine space, uh, then everything can happen, right? Because you don't know what's coming ahead of you. <laughs> so... Uh, I think that's kind of a, a, a part of the idea of something chaotic, uh, chaotically fun. All these rocks and tunnels and something labyrinthine. Um, don't think the rocks themselves was like an like, important part of the visual here. Maps like Dust Bowl, for example, I think have a number of tunnels which perhaps are more more strongly part of the visual as I see it. I don't know. I'm not doing a critique of Dust Bowl right now. I'm doing a critique of Banana Bay. Also, what time is it? Okay. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, let's leave those four ideas, I guess. A lot of stuff, I think it's covered too by one of those in one way or another. So just recap those ideas. So the creative vision as interpret was to make a payload race map for Team Fortress 2, to make something iconic for bananas, <laughs> you know, all about bananas in some way or another, uh, about a tropical island, tropical paradise, tropical island thing, and finally, it should be some, should be a map with some sort of chaotic fun. Anything can happen. Sometimes the train is gonna go. Sometimes, sometimes you're in a tunnel. You don't know who is on the other side of the map. Who is on the other side of the tunnel? If it's a heavy behind a medic, or if it's a sniper focusing somewhere else, so you just kill it. You know, you never know what's going to happen. The way the yeah, you don't know. Yeah. So chaotic fun. So those are those are my four ideas for the interpretation of the creative vision here. So let's move on to the judgment step. For this judgment, I will be considering six principles of art, which will be uh, movement, unity, slash variance, variety. Uh, I say unity slash variety because they're kind of opposites, but for this critique, I'm going to be talking about them together. Some authors don't do that. Some authors separate, I'm going to do them together. So anyway, as I was saying, so movement, unity slash variety, contrast, emphasis, balance, and proportion. So those are the principles I'll be considering. Uh, there's not that much of a consensus, as, as I have found online at least, of what the principles are, but those are the ones I'm gonna be taking into account here after my studies on this. And uh, I'm gonna be talking a little bit about them to help understand, to help you understand. And so let's begin movement. So movement's not about animations. It's how about a work of art can move your eyes around, guide your eyes around. Think like arrow signs that say, it's look left, this, yeah, look, look to this direction, and then you, your eyes kind of move there. I don't know if that's cultural or biological or whatever, but that's not my job to. <laughs> to reach that, that's, I don't know, psychology, his thoughts, I don't know. Um, so movement. Uh, the principle of movement, uh, where do I see it here? For Banana Bay... I re I'm already thinking of some stuff that we often see. Because this is, since this is payload, often the rails, and previously other critics contributed, but let's do this... Uh, but let's see what else. That was one thing. Uh, what else? So even like these things at the top here, I think have a little bit of the principle of movement here. Stuff like uh, extension helps, so sh specific shapes and forms help, depending also on lines. But what else? There is the trains. Uh, the okay. What else? So let's just add around it. I see the rails like helping with the principle of movement because the idea is when you see one, you kind of, it kind of move. At least my eyes to the end of it. That works for all the rails here, both the payloads rails and the tr the train killing train rails. Else? The bridges, I think the 
bridges and viaducts I think also help convey principal movement to me and staircases, you know, all of that has a little bit of that as I see it. Uh, even this like support being structures have a bit of it. What else? There are many examples, you know, even stuff like the boat being with this pointy end of it, I think I see a little bit of it there. But I don't want to talk about every single small thing, I just try to look for the most uh, noticeable ones, stronger ones to me. Uh, for example, even the trunk of the palm trees, to me, uh, move a little bit my eyes up, upwards. Now let's see, we have stuff like the vista, but I don't know, uh, let's leave it at that. So the most strong, where I see most strongly are on the rails, on the bridges and viaducts, and I got a staircase, on the palm trees, and on a number of, them, of other small places. So, does any of that help uh, with the idea of a payload race map for Pinfarfi True? <laughs> well, if the rails are moving my eyes around, then that falls neatly in line with the game mechanics, with the game rules of Pinfarfi True, right? You have to push the payload to win the game, that's the whole idea, so you know, easily that's uh, working well together with the vision. What about the idea of uh, something about, about bananas? Oh my god, bananas! <laughs> so, um, funny enough, the palm trees are all about coconuts, <laughs> so I don't think I have seen any any one of them with bananas. Let me check something real quick. Because uh, I think banana trees look similarly to coconut trees. I just want to confirm that, yeah, totally, they totally do. But all of these are coconut, <laughs> coconut trees, how amusing. So, okay, um, great question now for, for us, for me, I guess. Are the coconut trees helping help with the idea of bananas? <laughs> because all of them, I think all of them have coconuts instead of bananas. Uh, so, um, in this case, I think I will say that the, it is contributing because of the similarities of coconut trees, palm trees, and banana trees. Because they have some similarities, especially on the leaves, you know, of the trees and stuff like that. So, and to me, I'm especially considering that because I think the coconuts are not that easy to see because of the shadows and stuff. There are no like coconuts on the ground, I haven't seen any. Even though, like, basically all palm trees have coconuts for the author's presentation and for considering light and darkness and stuff like that. It seems to me, to me, I don't think. Uh, it's easy to know, to realize that they're all about coconuts. Uh, honestly, uh, before I did this critique, I have played on this map before, but I hadn't realized they were coconut trees. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, although that makes sense. But either way, uh, I will say that's helping a bit. I will say that's helping. I would say that's helping there being principle of movement and there being all these palm trees basically. It's just that it was, to me, it was very easy for this to go wrong, <laughs> let's say. If the coconuts were easier to be seen, if there was like coconuts all over the floor, it would be hard for me, to, I think, uh, to... I think I would easily visually tie, not tie that to bananas. You know, so I will say that the principle of movement is helping because of that. You know, uh, yeah. In this case, I don't think we need to be specific. If there are some sort of, of uh, I don't know, a map, a contrast between coconuts and bananas. I don't know. Oh, the blue thing is about coconuts and the red thing is about bananas, or vice versa. You know, if that was some sort of thematic for the map, 
but I don't know if you guess. If that was some sort of thematic for the map, then that would be a very big problem. <laughs> that the, these are coconut trees. But since I don't see that, I think it's okay to just uh, convey the morphology of trees that are like banana trees. Not, you know, it's kind of fooling the player's eyes. Uh, that's gonna be my take on this. Um, okay, so what about that's it for bananas? What about the tropical island, tropical paradise? I, <laughs> the movement. Yeah, again on the trees, right? Because uh, because the trees are this kind of vegetation, this kind of, kind of flora. I think is very easily tied to the iconography of tropical islands, you know. <laughs> I think it's helping convey that. And the rails and the bridges, I don't, I don't think it's good enough. You see, maybe, I don't know, uh, I don't know if some... What's this? Somebody joined my server or something? Benjada? Oh my god, I'm like, uh, I, okay, maybe I, maybe the server is open because of some other stuff, well, whatever, if the person gets in, uh, I, maybe I can kick them, I guess, if that becomes a problem, because uh, I have opened my parts for some other reason, uh, and uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, okay, then <laughs> this is gonna be a bit awkward, maybe, but uh, kick. And I maybe I'll close my doors for this. This shouldn't be. Benjada, it's. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I probably shouldn't. Do. Okay, then, you know what? Oh no, I didn't know that happened, because when I was doing the thing that I was doing, I was always creating a server, but apparently just by getting into a map, uh, I think that does it. You know what, I can just do this, I guess. Do I have... Oh my god. <laughs> okay, let's change this password here then. Uh, that also helps, right, I guess? I don't know, uh, I don't want anyone to go there and... Uh, Wow, this has never happened before. Amazing. There we go. Yeah, it's gonna be easy for the dude to get into a banana bay server with the ser the, the password being banana, right? Uh, okay. <laughs> I learned something today. <laughs> well, okay. Anyway, let's back get back to where we were. Um, We were talking about movement, okay, tropical islands, and stuff, yeah, okay, so class typical fauna for tropical islands, those palm trees. And finally, what about the idea of something, of some chaotic, something chaotically fun? Something chaotically fun, is the principle of movement helping? I think so, because of the way the payload's rails are laid about. Uh, so, okay, there we are again. Also, I guess I need to... Uh, okay, tournament... Well, wow, there we go. Tournament mode. There's another way to get the, to cut the timer, but I forget now. Anyway, uh, so yeah, as I was saying, the prism of movement. There is... So, as I said, all these like intertwining paths, and I think the principle of movement is helping us go through them. Because the rails are always following these intertwining paths and stuff. And then, as I said, so it's all like pretty confusing and intertwining and stuff like that. And I see that as helping make something chaotic. And being payload race, chaotically fun, because basically the twins are intertwining and fighting each other always constantly and never know when, because the, everything get, you know, I think I, you get the picture. Um, and so, yeah, principle of movement there. What time is it? Okay. Let's now talk about the principle of unity slash variety, as I said. 
Uh, they're opposites, but both can help contribute to con convey the creative vision. The Unity is about different parts of the artwork, apparently like working together in some way. There are many ways to accomplish it. You can think of proximity, continuity, repetition patterns. Uh, some authors believe every one of these are like different principles, but I, 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 go, in, I go with... Uh, but some authors believe that they are methods for achieving unity, and that's what I go with. And variety is the opposite of that, and it's just like, as the name goes, it's like uh, the different elements in there. So, for example, the different flowers, you know, if they have a lot of different colors, that's variety. There's stuff like this banana peels in random places, so <laughs> that's variety. Uh, what else? Even just simply stuff like, oh, there being both col two colors, very small variety, right? But there being shades of pink for the rock and shades of gray for the other rock, that's some minute variance. So anyway, with all that said, um, is unity slash variety helping some way convey that this is a Team Fortress shoe, this is a payload, rap map, payload race map for Team Fortress shoe? Uh, Unity slash right usually <laughs> help with everything one way or another. So for here, for example, there is variety in that there is the, there is the rails, <laughs> you know. They are there is also unity because there is all the repetition in the patterns of in this pattern of uh, plank, wooden planks, you know. It's a repetition because they have roughly they are basically repeating color and textures and stuff like that and there's continuity on this metal part of that is unity and that easily ties to the the, the game mechanics of Team Fortress 2 you know for example uh, usually what I do is just try to look where I see this unity slash rise right most strongly but uh, in any case whatever <laughs> let's do it a bit different and just go for the pre for the vision so yeah, so when it comes to the... So there is unity and variety helping here with the conveying the design map for Team Fortress 2. So what about the idea of uh, bananas and stuff like that? So <laughs> I just mentioned it, right? There's a number of bananas, like banana views like this one on random spots. There is one also in here. So there's a random banana peel under the bridge here. There might be others. And not only that, we have stuff like the crate of bananas, which are a bunch of bananas uh, that are all in proximity to each other, repeating in color. So, and shapes and forms. So all of that easily conveys that this is, there's something about bananas going on here. <laughs> this map has something to do with bananas, you know? Uh, what else? So, what about the idea of a tropical island? Uh, this one is easy. There is all the repetitions of the palm trees, as I mentioned, something found that's very easily associated with, with the iconography. I would say there is also the continuity of the sand and the sea. And, uh, you know, it extends throughout. It draws like if there was just like uh, a little patch of, of sand somewhere in a map, imagine junction, imagine a CP junction where it's, where it's everything metallic, imagine just like that is like a patch of sand somewhere, who cares, right? <laughs> There's, but that, that would be variety, I suppose. But in here there is like all this beach that, that extends, there's continuity, so easily I'd see that as helping convey notions of a tropical island trop or tropical paradise. I also mentioned the palm trees. What about the notion, the idea of... What was it? Our palm tree... But talk about, uh, the last one? Uh, ah, chaotic, some sort of chaotic fun. Okay, as I mentioned, variety I think has helping the most with that. We have uh, all the different colors of flowers, you know? Every, so it's a very colorful map. I think that uh, helps to make something fun and very variety is so intrinsically tied to chaos let's say if it's too much it can, can become chaotic um, 
and what else? Again, there is, and just like what I said for the, there is also repetition on the rails, as I said. Although in this case, I would say that uh, the proximity of the rails often meeting each other halfway. That's like uh, there's a number of times this happens, right? I don't know. You have like this whole part, so there's continuity in the rails uh, facing each other, and then they like meet halfway in here again, and then. Uh, oops, the other way around, I think. Where is it? I don't know. Uh, and then they like go behind everybody and stuff. So. Yeah, I think that's helping a bit conveying chaotic fun. Those things, the variety of all the plant, the flowers and stuff, you know, the fun. It's a bit slightly maybe, but in any case. And also, I suppose there is the. Where this is gonna be perhaps the strongest argument, I guess. There is the tray itself. So there is also like repetition patterns here for these rails, but these ones are for the train that at any moment can like show up and kill people <laughs> and you'll know when, so that's chaotic and uh, yeah and if it's your enemy it's fun so <laughs> easily I see here unit slash variety helping helping here with the vision so yeah uh, what about uh, let's go talk about the, the principle of contrast now so, contrast uh, is about differences in the artwork and in different parts in the artwork and how do they get noticed. You might think red versus blue, it's important to show, but uh, you gotta see that visually, usually juxtaposition is a way to do it. So, because if they're kind of far apart, <laughs> the blue side and the red side, you know. The best we can have for contrast something like this, we have like this, the grey on the right and the pink on the left, but that contrast is not even that strong to me. So you know, on some maps it's easier to see contrast between red and blue. For example, King of the Hill Lazarus, there is one angle, angle of the map that you can kind of see a blue building to one side and a red one to the other. And so yeah. In here I suppose during gameplay we could see like the red payload and the blue payload in contrast to each other. There's, there's that. So. It is interesting, so um, kind of a, kind of a mess for us to to deal with, that, deal with that for this critique. But anyway, like uh, should we consider the payloads in movement or something? Anyway, I'm just gonna stick to the map as it is right now. But uh, but yeah, stuff about critiquing <laughs> art for made for a game. In any way, other examples of contrast is the contrast between the, the very, very clear blue of the sky and the sea and the, the light yellow of the sand, especially like on these parts of the map, but it's, it's, I also see it on those parts. On these parts of on those islands, there's contrast between the, the green of the trees, the light yellow of the sand and the blue of the sky. So of that, those are all like very noticeable contrasts. Here throughout the map, there's contrasts between the green of the vegetation and the light yellow of the ground. So those are examples, some cool examples of contrast. Even stuff like this is a small part. There is like yellow and black in contrast to each other. Um, to achieve emphasis, I believe in that case. But we're gonna talk about emphasis in a moment. I even stuff like the, tr the brown trunk of the palm tree and the green leaves. So all that stuff, does any of that help with conveying that this is a payload, res payload uh, race map for Team Fortress 2? So... Uh, we have, you could say small stuff like, oh, there is some very small contrast in the shapes and the, of the rails here, the shapes and forms of the rails in comparison to the platform they're standing beneath. You know, it's very minute, but it's there. So that would be enough, I think, to help convey the vision. It's, it's very small, but it is there. 
But we could naturally talk about contrast between the red and blue, because even on this angle we kind of see it, because, especially because of the outline uh, on this distance. In mid-game that contrast is gonna be even more strongly um, noticeable, easier to notice. So all oh, that very naturally ties to Team Fortress 2, game design, red, red versus blue, it's always the red team versus the blue team. And then when the dismounting of the rails, you could say for example also there's some contrast of the brown and grey of the rails and the white and the light yellow and, gr and green of the ground around it, there is some contrast here also. That also helps, you know, um, makes, that also helps us look, <laughs> there is, uh, that makes us notice this easily. And it's intrinsically tied to the game mechanics, to the, the, to the rules of the game. You, the payload's gonna has to go pass through this part here to, for you to win the game later. So yeah, there's all that. Um, also, yeah, it's small, and perhaps I could have said this for variety, but you have like the sloped parts. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, let's. But let's talk about that in a second. So yeah, the, the contrast is helping, I see it, with conveying this as a Team Fortress 2 payload race map. What about the idea of bananas? <laughs> so, very interestingly, the contrast and variety can so easily match, you know. I was going to, I'm going to talk about this banana, <laughs> this, random, this random bananas. So for example, this the color here and the shapes of the banana in the whole gray and the uh, straight light, straight like structure of the bridge, you know, there is a, there is some contrast there that I think makes you realize there's a banana peel there, it's funny, and uh, stuff like this. There is also, again, contrasting colors, shapes, forms, texture, all that, uh, texture mostly because the banana does not have a woody texture. As I said, I don't see much texture in the bananas, but the wood does have textures. So there's this contrast there, and it's helping <laughs> convey... It's more, it's more stuff, but I really think it's helping for us to notice that the, there are bananas there. You could also even say stuff like uh, the yellow of the bananas in contrast with the brown of the box. You know, simple stuff, but all of those I think help uh, helps us think of bananas <laughs> in this map. Uh, what about the idea of... Tropical Island, again, I think the stuff that I said makes it very easy, right? Contrast between sand and the, the colors, for example, and textures also of the sand and the vegetation, also the blue of the, sea, of the sky and the sea and the sand and the vegetation, all that I think it's pretty easily iconic for Tropical Islands. Those colors, those materials and stuff, so, you know, um, and I see the contrast there helping. For stuff like the vast to see, in this case kind of the element of space maybe, and no, not necessarily right. More, more about color. I guess if there would be contrast between space, it would be between. I know it's helping a bit, I guess, because there is also contrast between the whole vastness of the ocean stuff like that, and these more you know grounded parts let's say. So it makes you think that you're in an island, not just a tropical place, but a tropical island, right? So yeah, the element of space is also helping here through contrast. So with all that said, uh, uh, finally, what about chaotic fun? So this is what I was wanted to say before. We have these parts here with... Uh, there is this like yellow and black. There, these parts are ramp, and through the game mechanics we have the... Ah, that could also have been tied to the, the other idea. But uh, we have like a number of ramps in this map, if you look on the bottom part of it, there is like uh, one, two, three, four ramps. That's a, that's a lot, lot of like, and they are in different directions, so at one point it's gonna be harder, at one point it's gonna be easier for you to pass through the payload. And so, and there's some contrast here and that helps add variety to the map, you know, because there are like, that's different stuff going on. Do the, there is no, there doesn't seem to be some rhyme or reason to it. It's not like a ramp and nothing, ramp and nothing. They are kind of like randomly spread, you know. So you can look at in the bottom part. You can look at the sizes of this, this of the ramps and stuff. And, and yeah, and there is this small contrast. 
And uh, I wonder if there's anything more noticeable here to convey chaotic, fu chaotic fun for contrast. I don't know. Perhaps I would say like um, the shapes and farms. We have stuff like the bridges in contrast with the the tunnels. Also space, I guess the tunnels are a, a bit tighter, labyrinthine space, and then we have these this more open areas. So all of that is like different kinds of stuff going on, different uh, geograph geometries, and uh, you know, and there's so much vari variety in it, and I think that's very closely, ties very well to something chaotically fun. You never know what you're going to expect, you can't prepare to... If you try to prepare for one kind of situation, you're gonna easily find yourself on another one at any moment, you know? If you, I don't know, want to pick heavy... If you just want to pick heavy because uh, there is a design document that says, oh, on open, on open areas heavy... can shred the enemies. It was from the, the, the developers of Team Fortress Classic. That heavy was designed to be strong on open areas. Anyway, so maybe if you just go like, ah, oh, there's this open area, I'm gonna pick heavy to kill everybody or something, then uh, very right after you are in a tight tunnel here, <laughs> you know. So there's all of that uh, makes it chaotic, hard to control. Let's say what's going to, what experience you're going to have, and, and I think that's also kind of fun. So yeah. Uh, now, what about the principle of emphasis? Emphasis is all about like uh, some parts of the art keeping your eyes there, being some sort of focal point. If there, if the, if if we if we can, if you think of it as hierarchy, some authors separate believe the hierarchy is a principle of art and folk and emphasis is another. But uh, if you do it like me and consider those kind of the same thing, hierarchy would just mean uh, that can take care of the there can be more than one focal point, so there can be like a stronger one than a smaller one. That's at least uh, how I see things for art. So, emphasis slash hierarchy. Uh, where do I see it here? So, a bit harder, I would say, perhaps you find points of emphasis because of there's so much variety. You know, so it's hard to have some part of it that focus your eyes there. But we can kind of find these smaller ones. For example, this uh, boat with the pedals and the rope is somewhat of a small source of emphasis to me because it's kind of isolated and in the use of space, it's like empty around it, you know, and there is unique forms and shapes as we said before, even textures also. And uh, yeah, so that's like a point of emphasis, small one, but still. The payloads <laughs> are also the strong source of emphasis through their very unique geometry and colors, you know, especially in contrast with the rest. Contrast is a, can help to achieve emphasis often. What else uh, for emphasis? The train in the middle of the map also. So this is gonna be a tricky one because the train doesn't always show up and uh, I'm not sure if I should consider critic this map like static or consider the animations a part of it. I'm not sure if the, there would ought to be I believe cons different considerations to critique animations and static art because the principle of movement for example ought to be re-evaluated maybe, <laughs> right? But I would I will say that I, uh, I do see some emphasis in the middle of the map through farm shapes and space, for example, because it's all symmetrical. But then there's this thing in the middle of the map. We have this very unique geography, ge sorry, geometry in the middle of the map. We have the bridge. So the, these are like unique elements that I that in this case I think help bring emphasis to the middle of the map. And by extent a little bit the train, I guess, but uh, I want to consider the train itself for this critique. So, does any of that help tie with the idea of a payload race? My parting for shoe? Well, can you guess? Uh, if the payloads with their unique geometry, with their unique uh, shapes, forms, and uh, stuff like that, and also their outlines, so ah, maybe I should consider the lines around the payloads 
As lines, right? Oh, wow. I have never thought of that. <laughs> because what was the lines? I didn't, I didn't consider there to be lines here, but if I'm considering the payloads, I ought to, right? Uh, this would... Uh, okay, so just a quick uh, analysis on these lines. They were basically are... There are two sets of red and blue lines. They are... Basically... Regular in thickness. And... Uh, have many unique curvatures. Not curvatures, uh, I don't know how to say this. There is both curvature and, and straightness and edge parts of it. Anyway, it's because it's the shape of the pillows, right? But yeah. But in any case, so the lines and the uniqueness, so variety in the shapes and forms of the payloads, I think I'll bring emphasis, and a bit of contrast, you know, <laughs> from the colors of them and the rest of the map, that helps a bit, even though um, contrast... Uh, yeah, the, the element of color the con with the principle of contrast is also helping a bit with the emphasis here to me. So naturally, if there is a certain degree of emphasis on the payloads, um, you know, that's tied to the game mechanics, the game, the rules of the game. This is payload race. You gotta push this thing, the payload, to win the game. You know, you know that. So yeah, easily, that uh, is helping. What about the idea of a tropical... Uh, no, sorry, bananas. First things first, bananas. So, emphasis... For emphasis... Um, I don't think I see anything about bananas, you know? There is the palm tree... I mentioned how the palm trees I before, I think that helps remember us of banana trees. But there is so many of them that I don't think uh, it's helping with emphasis. Sometimes repetition can... You know, make it harder to find emphasis somewhere. Uh, what else? Not sure. And the uh, banana, small banana details that I mentioned, I think there's too small to be a source of emphasis. So, literally, there's like. Would I say there's some emphasis to them? But Because I didn't say there's a lot of contrast. When I was talking about contrast and variety, I didn't say there's a lot of it, right? Um, no, I don't think so. I don't think there is emphasis. I think there's contrast. I think there is variety, so that has has noted it. But ah, maybe there is some slight one. Then it would be hi hierarchy, and that would be like one of the smallest sources of hierarchy. Um, maybe yeah. In other words, I think it, they were designed to be seen. Let's say. Especially this one, that is in the middle of the map, which ties well with what I said before for the placement of the bridge. And I think a little bit of it is also here on the banana, so okay. So especially this banana, I think it's helping, true emphasis, convey, reminds us of bananas, stuff like that. Perhaps there, we could say that these ones have also a little bit of emphasis to them. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it would, they would be like at the very bottom of the hierarchy, emphasis-wise, but whatever. Uh, this one I think has a stronger argument to it. Uh, okay, what about uh, the idea of a tropical island? So for emphasis, the best I can think of is this thing here, the boat. But I'm not sure that ties well to a tropical island. You know, tropical islands are in the sea, but uh, you don't usually <laughs> use this kind of boats to go there, I guess. Okay, I guess there is like, what, some cartoons, there is, there, there are some cartoons where the character uses these kinds of boats to, <laughs> they're like in the sea and with these kind of boats and they found an island or something, I don't know. But uh, I don't think that's strong enough. I think that's kind of a long stretch to get there. Not sure I see emphasis. And the other stuff that I said, I don't see it helping. We have what? The bridges and stuff. Bananas, again, I don't think that's intrinsically tied to tropical islands. And uh, yeah, I don't know. The best thing I could think of is the boat, but I still think it's conceptually far enough, let's see. 
Só dança e ênfase helping convém. Uh, the, the iconography the, of a tropical island. Uh, what about the idea of chaotic fun? With emphasis? Uh, I, did, I did mention this thing, which is kind of like a unique element, so there's some variety because it's in the map, but uh, I don't see that this as communicating chaotic fun in any way, honestly. If this was like a trampoline that you jump on it and then you fall, fly far away, <laughs> maybe, you know, <laughs> but that's not here or there. Um, what else? Uh, ah, no, but there's something I just realized. Uh, I did mention before how I see emphasis on the um, on the middle of the map, and on the middle of the map, it's where the train passes through <laughs> on this specific bridge, which I think is even easier to see emphasis, isn't it? Considering the presentation, I think when you walk around the map. This part of it is easier to be seen than the underneath this platform because of the height of it and stuff like that. I think this part is a bit harder for you to notice, but I think this bridge and also stuff like the shape, the unique shapes and form of it, all, have, all of that help. Uh, I think make it a point of emphasis. And if the train, if the crazy train that can can kill people at any moment and you don't know when they are going, if they're, the train is gonna come. If there is if there is some element that's being emphasis to it, then I believe um, emphasis is helping convey chaotic fun. Basically, because tying to the game mechanics rules of the game, um, in this case I think just rules of the game. Basically, because the train can kill anybody, everybody in any time moment, and I consider that chaotic and fun. Again, fun because it can happen to your enemies and not you. You know, <laughs> maybe you're just doing your thing and then a random thing goes and kills your enemies, oh my god, and then you're gonna, I don't know, laugh, because, you know, that was random, so that's how I see it, also end of stream time, let me not take too long, uh, but that was it for emphasis, well, now we just need to talk about uh, balance and proportion, so balance, balance is all about uh, states of equilibrium or tension in your artwork, if that's conveyed visually, uh, you know, because this thing, do you know if it's really made out of iron or if it's just uh, pa paper, paper mache? How is it? I don't know. Or is just just some weak material painted as it was iron? You know, if is this going to fall down in a in a week or so? Or we don't know like for real if this was something real life. But visually, it looks like uh, something made out of iron, something stable. You know, some sort of structure. So that's what we're looking for. It was what would be sources of visual balance, visual equilibrium, tension, or lack of those. So uh, this here, for example, looks a little has some very slight uh, lack of equilibrium here because the woods are not like perfect you know it looks like some kind of makeshift structure to me but very slightly it still looks uh, stable to me but yeah what else for that kind of stuff this bridge, this bridge also looks makeshift, but I don't see that uh, conveying lack of equilibrium necessarily. It seems to me that uh, it's just a little bit uh, ugly, let's say. But not necessarily that it's gonna fall down or anything, much less has some tension parts in it. What else? Uh, this bridge looks, as I said before, looks pretty solid, pretty stable. It looks like the dudes knew all about engineering when they built it, and uh, I don't think I see any tension or uh, lack of equilibrium. So, yeah. Visually, as always. What else? In here. Uh, in this one, I'm not sure, I would say. Maybe there is also some very small lack of equilibrium visually because the plank, the sport beams are not. Uh, oh no, there is some sort of pattern to them, right? Okay, there is some sort of pattern. Yeah, so... Not sure that I see any visual lack, lack of equilibrium here. Or, or tension. Uh, I only see 
it on that one, which is where over here, I think. The tree. Yeah, it is here. It looks a bit makeshift, but and that could maybe cause something to collapse. But that's where I see it. Anywhere else? Uh, ah, again, on this rock, it's kind of an arc, but it looks so thick that it looks pretty stable to me. It's usually hard to find the uh, lack of equilibrium or some tension or anything for Twist to Art because everything is just like, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, it's just like maps so it's, or weapons. It, I don't know. Maybe they could be. They could be. There could be visual tension stuff, but I don't usually see it. Uh, on this boat, I don't think, yeah, it's mostly balanced in equilibrium stuff. Uh, so yeah, so this is the only part that I see any of that, usually, and very slightly, some, I don't even see tension, just some very slightly lack of equilibrium, and possibly this can fall down if something really bad happens someday, you know. That's the only where I see it. I don't also on the spawn room just in case uh, let's see. Yeah here nothing. Uh, there are bananas, there are some stuff later on, but for yeah. Anyway, so does any of that help convey that this is a payload race map for Team for Shoe? Uh no, right? Because everything is okay, everything is mostly in balance in equilibrium visual balance, except for this. This I don't see it convey anything for three for two specifically and the rest is whatever that's not like part of being in equilibrium is not a part of team for shoes identity right it's just that it, it has it is there but it could not be and whatever you know as long as there are the classes and the control points and stuff red and blue anyway uh how i see it at least what about the idea of a um, of bananas. <laughs> what about the idea of bananas? So again, um, whatever. <laughs> Most things are balanced, in visual, visually balanced. Uh, what about this one? That, that's the only exceptional kind of. Uh, I don't know. Just wood. Whatever. Again. Oh, but bananas grow on trees, and tre from the trees we take the wood. But that, to me, that's still too much of a, a path, mental path to, to to first to take you know just look at it oh, it's wood i don't see that communicating bananas <laughs> plain and simply what about a tropical island uh, again uh, whatever everything being a visual balance uh, mostly almost everything being visual balance does that have anything to do with tropical islands <gasps> no <laughs> not to me at least and uh, others you know whatever what about this Made out of wood, some sort of a makeshift solution, but uh, don't think it's strong enough. Even if it was someone who built this from the wood from the island, uh, I don't know, couldn't that be the case from some other sort of biome? But if it was a jungle, not an island, whatever, right? don't see it helping. And finally, what about chaotic fun? Oh, that's the, the worst, right? Because every, if everything is visually balanced, then how can, can we have a, any sort of chaotic fun? This would be our only hope, and... Uh, I guess this is something, you know? Uh, being not like something perfectly made, you know, stuff like that, uh, I guess, helps convey it a little bit, much like I mentioned, variety on the many colors of the flowers. So I guess this is very ever so slightly giving off this vibe of uh, chaotic fun and uh, things are we're not uh, things are not in order. Let's see, things are uh, things are not uh, everything in order. So I think this is helping ever so slightly convey it, I guess. And finally, the, let's talk about the principle of uh, proportion, which is about the different sizes of things. So for this principle, what I usually do is try to look, uh, try to place things in scales broadly, just to help the most, just to, to try to think a little bit about that, and also look at anything with very notable dimensions, because sometimes it's not good enough to just uh, say, ah, oh, this is bigger than that. Sometimes something is very small, 
but very long, for example. So that's why I also look at the notable dimensions. So, for example, if I'm going to uh, place in scales, I would say like probably the bigger the big rocks are what I would roughly place on the bigger scale. Uh, the biggest scale of all of all things. There you go. Uh, I don't know if actually maybe I would place the sea. Maybe I would cons put the sea and the sky kind of in the same scale of the biggest things of the map visually. Just because they're you know so expensive and stuff. Uh, and uh, let's see here. After that, then I guess I would consider the the rocks, the bigger rocks. After that, I would probably think on the viaducts, the what, the, and the smaller rocks. The viaducts maybe on the scale bigger than the smaller rocks. Yeah, I guess I would say that. So, biggest of all, the sea in the sky. After that, the bigger rocks. After that, the viaducts. The, smaller than the viaducts, the rock, the other rocks like this one. Uh, what else? After that, maybe I would consider the payload. And after and below the payload, I guess the tails like the boxes of bananas and all the paraphernalia that we have on spawn, the rope over there and stuff. And uh, that would be, be kind of up here, a box of bananas. That would be kind of. That encompasses a lot of stuff, but some stuff are missing, right? Which are stuff that I see having noticeable dimensions, like I said. So, for example, the rails, which are, you know, have a relatively small in width, but they are long, as I said. And I was, for example, think about this. They have some very long dimensions, very long, very noticeable length to them. And also, I'm thinking on the palm trees. Which again have a, a girth, the thickness very small, relatively to the other stuff at least. But then it gets tall, so those are parts of it with unique dimensions that I'm just don't think makes sense to like just group it in size comparing with the other stuff. So all that said, um, does any of that help convey that this is a pale race um, Map for Team Fortress 2. So easy, right? As I said, the rails have very unique dimensions of how lengthy they are, and uh, that's because that they are the path that the payload takes, and you know, those things are all about each other. So easily that's helping with the visual. After that, what about the idea of a tropical island? This is in the sky, right? <laughs> Especially because it's a tropical island. If it was a tropical jungle, I don't know, who cares? Uh, the vastness of the sea and the sky, I don't think it would be that important, let's say. But if you're in an island in the middle of uh, the sea, by definition of islands, you know, there being the whole vastness of the sea and sky, I think it's something very easily through the elements of space, the elements of space and color, I guess. The texture, right? The, the sea has this wavy texture. That's it. Uh, the wavy relu relucent, translucent texture, whatever. Um, all of that easily ties to the, I think, the mental image of a tropical island. Spe specifically, an island, not so much tropical, right? But specifically, an island. Not necessarily tropical. Um, so, yeah. Ah, and I guess also if it's about uh, tropical, I did mention the palm trees as being classic icon iconography for tropical islands, as I see it. And having unique dimensions also help with that, I guess. What about... Uh, I kind of skipped, I think I was meant to talk about bananas first. <laughs> so, what about bananas? Again, I'm going to say that just because it's harder to see the co coconuts and we don't see it like any on the floor or something like that, I'm going to say that it kind of works by kind of fooling us visually, uh, being in being with its unique dimensions and stuff like that. I will say that kind that's helping uh, in this case, you know, 
Very easily that could have gone wrong, but I will I believe it has it's okay here. Um, and finally what about chaotic fun? So she had that said with the proportions and stuff. Um, I think the only thing that could have anything to it is the very long uh, length of the rails. Which I think... Ah, interesting, this could also, I guess, be tied to chaotic fun, like a part where you go underwater, but I, I don't know which principle or element, or which principle that could tie to contrast, maybe, elements of color and texture, but anyway. So is this very long rails all about chaotic fun? I did mention before that, like, the way that the builds often, uh, like, on a number of occasions, meet halfway, through the rails, I see that as helping with uh, the idea of chaotic fun. But I guess also the I will say that the amount of curvature that they have they have on these very long rails, you know, it's not like a straight line and then, and then, and then, and then, and then you reach the end. There is so much curvature and uh, you go through so many different uh, places, as I said, it's all labyrinthine and stuff. And being all of that because of this the fact that the rails is that long, I will say the proportion is also helping us convey chaotic fun in this manner. So technically like this whole curvature thing is refers to their sh shapes and forms. And uh, you could, I guess I could have also tied it to contrast and variety I believe. But yeah, anyway, I'm tying it to proportion here as well. Because you know, you, you, you need to be at if it was a point there couldn't be you can't have a curve on a point you know <laughs> anyway oh uh, yeah so with all that said um, many of the principles helped uh, on, with the vision often right in different ways there is a lot of stuff a lot of different ways to approach iconography there are scholars there's the vastness of things the palm trees for the infrastructure sure there are the rails there are the payloads Chaotic fun, there are a number of stuff, so my only conclusion is that this is a successful work of art. Congrats, uh, designers of Banana Bay! Uh, I have no idea if this was Valve or someone from the community, but uh, yeah, I think it works. Everything that uh, you try to achieve, if I interpret it correctly. That was it for today, join me tomorrow for more gameplay and art critiques, see ya then, bye!